Cardano has just rebounded from its biggest ever DDoS or denial of service attack. If you're not familiar with this type of attack, it aims to bring a blockchain down by spamming it with garbage or useless transactions. Now, earlier today, we saw over 6,000 transactions being submitted on chain, which each one of them containing over 100 plus Plutus V2 scripts that had to be validated. Now, this is where a lot of the junk data was basically held, which basically created a lot of congestion on chain. As a part of today's video, I wanna talk about the DDoS attack. I wanna highlight everything that we know and exactly what we can expect moving forward. What's up, Ada Nation? A welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. I'm your host here, Fareed. As a part of today's video, really, really interesting news day for the Cardano ecosystem as a whole. If you somehow missed it, Cardano was actually spammed, right? Or there was a DDoS or DDoS attack, a denial of service attack taking place against the network. Um, it's actually stood up extremely well. Things are back to normal. But as a part of today's video, I want to highlight what happened. Um, what we can expect in terms of fixes and what we've learned from this so far. So as always, if you guys enjoy content like this, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions, then leave a comment down below. Jumping into the post here that was released by the Intersect MBO. It reads, the network has experienced a higher load than normal and some SPOs have been negatively impacted due to an intensification in block height battles. However, the chain as a whole is currently functioning as expected with only a small impact on overall transaction timings and some reduction in chain density. In closing, it states, the task force, which includes the Cardano um, Foundation, IOG, as well as prominent members and developers from the ecosystem, um, will be working to test and basically identify, you know, what can be done moving forward to make sure that this doesn't happen again. In closing, it states, we'll keep the, uh, the community updated via Discord and social media channels. Now, from a visual standpoint, I wanna quickly go ahead and play a video here for anybody who just maybe isn't aware of what happened, um, but in a nutshell, um, within every single um, block, we have different types of transactions. Some of those can be DeFi related. Some of those could be swaps on DEXs. Some of those could be registering to a stake pool. Some of those could be withdrawing rewards. Whatever the case is, there's a ton of different transactions that can be done on the ecosystem. Now, some of those are using Plutus V1 and some of those are using Plutus V2. If you're not aware, Plutus V2 came out um, not too long ago and we've actually just got the release of Plutus V3 on the Cardano testnet. So as a part of, I believe the chain hard fork, we're gonna be getting um, new upgrades when it comes to Plutus, in addition to some of the features and developments when it comes to governance. Now, I say all that just to preface this as, as I go ahead and actually play the video here, you're gonna notice a ton of scripts or these little gray cog looking icons there in the background. So this was actually in real time at um, eutxo.org where you can actually visualize all the transactions to see what kind of metadata is contained within each block. So that's sort of the first net you'll notice is a huge spam amount of those scripts. Now, what this uh, malicious actor or what this bad actor was basically doing is taking advantage of how um, withdrawals are done when you delegate or stake to a stake pool. And what they're basically doing is loading up certain transactions, again, related to staking and unstaking. And what they were doing was basically adding a script with a bunch of logic, but it wasn't necessarily doing anything. So all it was doing was creating more work for the validators trying to validate the script, but they were able to do this because um, there was no additional fee, right, for the script that they were adding within a regular transaction. So this was sort of a loophole, which was introduced with Plutus V2. This will be taken away with Plutus V3, which again will be released once the um, governance or the chain hard fork comes to life. So I want to quickly touch on that there. Really, really crazy. Now this span for just about two to two and a half hours. And looking back and just listening into some of the developers and some of the Twitter spaces that were going on, um, this particular attack cost anywhere between $100 to $200 per hour to run. 
What's crazy is right now, the transaction fees on Cardano are set to around 0.16 to 0.17 ADA. So it really wasn't too expensive. Um, however, it just wasn't maintainable. And we actually had developers from within the community um, identify ways to make the spam attack um, a lot more um, pricey or a lot more costly for the actual attacker or the actual spammer. So um, we saw Phil from the Anastasia Labs team um, basically come up with a solution to impair the spam attack. And as soon as he um, brought that out, um, we immediately saw the spamming um, come to an end. Now, jumping over, we did hear from Michele as well. He's from Harmonic Labs. Again, another great developer who's contributed into this ecosystem where it states, in case you were wondering, the attack script was basically junk, um, not doing any real validation. Now, in an ideal world, based off of the size of the scripts that this person was using to um, clog up all of the network, um, those should have been um, valued at 50 times more. So they should have been paying 50 times more um, in terms of transaction fees than they actually were. Again, they found a loophole and basically were taking advantage of it. Now, I want to take a moment here just to speculate a little bit and to also talk about the sentiment in the community. And that was that this was either done by um, outsiders, for example, people coming in from other chains into Cardano in order to get exposure right to Cardano meme coins. So we've seen SNEC, um, which has been probably one of the biggest uh, meme coins launching here in the ecosystem. But we just saw the launch of Nike, which is Charles Hoskinson's pig. When I first saw this meme coin, it was sitting at a um, fully diluted market cap of about six to seven hundred thousand dollars US. Right now, it's sitting at eighteen million dollars US. Right, so I mean that has more than twenty to even thirty x since its initial launch. And so people were speculating that people were coming in from outside ecosystems, seeing the fact that things were thriving and growing on Cardano, and potentially wanted to um, sort of rain on the party here, right? For lack of better terms, now. To talk about the positive, number one, this basically was a huge stress test. So the network never shut down. Yes, there were delays because um, there was sort of a traffic jam getting other large transactions within the same blocks where these other scripts from the spammer were also being introduced. Now, again, the network never went down, even though transactions were taking a little bit longer um, than normal to go ahead and be processed. Um, everything did eventually make it through. Now, this is completely different to what we've seen on Solana, where they've had increased traffic, but that resulted in 75% of transactions actually failing. So that's a huge difference here between Cardano and other issues or other networks where we've seen DDoS or DDoS attacks. Now, second is the fact that even though this person was basically spamming the chain, making it um, a lot um a lot harder to use for everybody else. The transactions themselves generated transaction fees, which basically end up going at least a piece of them to the Cardano treasury, which goes back to the community. But then some of those fees also go back over to stake pool operators, which then goes to the delegators of those stake pools. So um, if you want to be technical, right, this person was actually providing more value to the Cardano ecosystem. Um, as opposed to taking away from it. Because again, their goal or the typical goal of a DDoS attack is to bring down whatever server, whatever network it is that you're DDoSing. In this case, that didn't happen. And we saw SPOs still processing blocks. Now, some of them um, did struggle to keep up with the blockchain and to uh, make sure that they were always synced at the tip of the blockchain. But we did see the majority of the network still maintaining good health even throughout the actual spam attack again it lasted about two to two and a half hours in in total where we saw basically every block that was minted coming in at 96 97 98 percent um capacity so again not a lot of room for other transactions to have made it through and as you guys saw earlier in that video that i was playing um that was a really good illustration from a visual standpoint as to how congested the network was now that said again we are going to be seeing fixes coming out in order to make sure that this doesn't happen moving forward. And there's also going to be an investigation coming in from IOG. Jumping back in here, I want to highlight a tweet from Patty here from Shamrock Pool, where he states the first transaction occurred on June 24th. So actually yesterday at 1258 p.m. And the last one taking place at 644 p.m. 
on the following day or June 25th. Now, it states here that three separate wallets began bombarding the network with transactions that contained up to 190 plus inner script transactions. What's crazy is on utxo.org, it keeps track of um, different records. And today we set a record for the most amount of scripts within a single block, which came in at 194. Again, this was an extremely solid um, stress test for the ecosystem. And it gives me that much more confidence in what Cardano is building and in the methodology that Cardano has been using to build so far. So not only are we the most secure blockchain, we're also the most uh, decentralized. And we've also been the one that's been up for the longest amount of time, um, excluding Bitcoin. Of course, Bitcoin is basically the, the granddaddy of everything here. Um, but looking outside of Bitcoin, Cardano comes in um, at number one in terms of uptime, um, security and decentralization. Now, focusing back here on the tweet, we've got three separate wallets, right? Which are basically spamming the network. Um, we have wallet number one here with 1400 transactions, wallet number two with 1800, and then wallet number three with over 2100 transactions being submitted. In closing, I want to highlight a tweet here by Phil, another developer here in the ecosystem, where he states, just to clarify, the network is behaving as intended. Liveliness is unaffected. Everything, including block size limit, transaction size limit, block times are all set to conservatively or are all set so conservatively that any attack on liveliness is a total waste of funds. Um, in closing, at the very bottom there, it reads, the idea behind this particular attack was to take advantage of the fact that the size of the reference scripts currently doesn't impact the transaction fee. However, it does impact the work that the validators have to do in order to process those transactions. So again, the fact that those scripts were able to be so large without an additional um, increase in transaction fee was what um, motivated the spammer to go ahead and use this method to clog the entire network down. As you guys can see, they're getting very technical very quickly, but to really sum it up here, um, Cardano has been tested and it's passed with flying colors. Couldn't ask for more. As we get ready to close out today's video, if I jump over into this next tab here, we can see that over the course of the past two weeks, we've seen increased chain action or increased chain load. Now, what's interesting is let me see when the actual launch of Nike was. Nike launched officially on Monday, the 17th of June. Now, look at that here. We've got the 17th of June where Cardano had a chain load of 22%. And boom, since then, all the way up to 71%. So I know a lot of people are not huge fans of meme coins or meme tokens, but the proof is in the pudding, right? It's basically brought more people, more eyeballs, and more liquidity into the ecosystem. Now to also touch on the other side of the coin that's taken away from real builders here, which I completely understand. My personal hope is that over the course of time, um, that liquidity moves from meme coins over into longer term or more sustainable projects. Now, as I close out here and we're discussing meme coins, um, Nike has been the hot topic. Snek has also been one of the leaders here in this space. But we've now also seen following the actual DDoS attack, the launch of a brand new token called DDoS. This is now up, let's see here, from the very bottom, nearly 2,500%. Now, not financial advice. Definitely be careful. This is a meme coin. But I want to show the fact here that the network has been extremely resilient in this type of event. Typically, people would be nervous. People would be panicking. Um, the chains would need to be restarted, whatever the case is. That has not been the situation here on Cardano. If anything, right, I'm sure that the attacker was not expecting for meme coin to launch, um, playing on the actual event itself, making people money in the process. So it's really crazy to just think about the morale um, and just sort of what is currently going on right now in the Cardano ecosystem. So if you've been around in this space, this is definitely not the time to step away, even though Bitcoin's price continues to sort of fade out and altcoins have taken a hit in the past couple of weeks. It's my personal opinion that this is a really great accumulation phase or an accumulation stage. Of course, again, not financial advice, do your own due diligence, do your own research. But right now within the Cardano ecosystem, there is so much opportunity here. Um, you would be amiss to not be paying attention to every little thing that's going on here. So 
Hopefully you guys have found updates like this to keep you updated. If so, make sure to go ahead and smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions surrounding what happened earlier, or you just want to maybe just state your opinion, then make sure to leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.